Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Rich Reviews. Welcome back to the greatest supercar channel on the internet. Of course, you guys know that already. And today you join us on a drive up to Kasakum Estate and specifically to Kasakum Manor House for afternoon tea with the Cotswold Ferrari Owners Club group. So today we're going to Castle Coombe and Castle Coombe is a very famous village, very, very famous old style village. If you Google it, you'll see what I mean. It's used for a lot of old style, if you like, um, period films. So for example, Dr. Doolittle, the very first Dr. Doolittle film with Rex Harrison was filmed, was extensively filmed at Castle Coombe. So it's a beautiful old style village, um, gets a lot of tourists every year and is a fantastic place to be and is pretty much idyllic, idyllic Cotswold um, slash Wiltshire village. So it's gonna be fantastic to go there to meet with the Ferrari Owners Club group and to have, to have afternoon tea with them. Beautiful place, beautiful setting and some great guys to have, the, to have the afternoon tea with. You'll join us there. Just driving down the top road or the, the main road into Castle Coombe now. And as we come through this section, you can see what I was talking about. Very period buildings, very period roads even. Um, yes, this is a modern road, but if you look at the, the buildings around, they're very old, very old style, beautiful village. We're just arriving now into the main part of Castle Coombe. So you've got Castle Coombe Cross on the right hand side and the exit from Castle Coombe Manor House is on the right hand side as well, just to the right. And we're coming along here. This, is, um, this, this street in itself is used extensively for filming and Dr. Doolittle with Rex Harrison was partly filmed to the left hand side over this area and this bridge section. If you look at, if you look through the film you'll see it was partly filmed here so we're here at Kosakoon Manor House look at this building guys this is astonishing I actually got married here many years ago That's absolutely astonishing place absolutely beautiful you can you get much more of a perfect setting and we've got the cars perfectly parked here. Not everybody's arrived yet, we're early yet. We've got our friend Nick's 458 Spider on the right hand side. Next to that, we've got our 550. To the left of that, we've got a 488 Spider. To the right, we've got our friend's 355 Spider. A lot of you will recognize this from a lot of videos we've done before. Here we've got a 328 GTS, and we've got my 458 Spider. We'll bring you some more details and some more cars as they arrive and as they park up a bit, little bit later on. But now we're going to sit down and, and get ourselves a cup of tea.
We're just going to pick up the cars that have turned up now, the additional cars. So we've got a 458 Italia, black, I bet that's friggin' hot. Got another 458 Italia here, 488 Spider, 355 Spider, beautiful condition this 355, Rosso Corsa over Crema, the definitive specification, beautiful. Moving further down, we've got an 812 GTS. TDF blue over tan, beautiful specification. Silver wheels, major, major bonus. We've seen this Ferrari 458 Speciale before. Beautiful specification, spot on number plate, recognize that. Rosso Corsa over Nero interior. And here we've got another 458 Italia. As we come down here, 488 Spider. We won't be picking up the cars that we've already picked up. Another 812 GTS. Another one of my favorite cars here, 458 Speciale, no stripe. And here we've got a 296 GTB in Imola Red with the Fiorano pack. This Imola Red looks almost ruby, like a very light red. I'm actually not so sold on it now, to be honest. And the trouble with this Fiorano pack is at the back, the, the, the silver looks like it's a gaping shark. It looks like it's got a gaping mouth on it. I'm not so sure it does it any favours. But the 296, as you know, we fortunate that we, went, we had an invite from Dick Lovitz and we test drove did a test drive on this on the road and on Millbrook Proving Ground track. And it was just a phenomenal experience. A stunning car and its engineering capability, absolutely stunning. Car it looks is fantastic. I just don't agree with this Fiorano stripe design. It's just uh, not a great look for the car, in my opinion. Adrian from Dick Lovitz has kindly brought this along to the event and he's enabled us to provide some content on the 296 GTB. So we're gonna give you a quick look round and then we're gonna show you in detail some of the interior configurations and the and how and the interior fitment of this car okay so this car actually has the Fiorano pack now as I've detailed earlier I'm not too keen on the actual stripe but the configuration of the car that I drove at Millbrook for the, at the Millbrook Proving Ground again for Dick Lovitz so thank you again for that Dick Lovitz was um, a 296 GTB with the Fiorano pack so with regards to suspension setup I actually prefer it even though it's a fixed suspension setup it isn't it hasn't got the Magna Ride um, self-configuring or alternate configuring via the Manatino um, I do actually prefer the suspension is a better setup and it's very sporty and it's fine for the road because I drove the GTB on the road as well if you remember as you can see here, um, um, we've already provided you content on this car anyway, but they've got the plexiglass engine cover. You can see there the actual exhaust covers. They're not actual, the plenums as they have in the earlier Ferraris. Um, a lot of people may think that, but they're polished covers over the actual exhaust. Um, for, from here, the rear section of this car is the thing that I have the biggest problem with, with this Fiat Fiorano stripe. It just makes it look like it's a gaping whale or gaping shark at the back with that colouring. I just wouldn't have that stripe on it at all. So we've got the key to the 296 and we're just going to open up the car and step inside and show you some of the interior. So the first thing we felt as soon as we got inside the car, both myself and my son felt the same thing. It's very compact in here when you compare it to the 458. Very, very compact indeed. But then the car is a lot more compact in its dimensions than the 458. And then downstream supercars like the F8 and the 488, etc. And I think it's a good way to go. You feel more surrounded and, and more encapsulated by the car. I think it's a very good feeling. And of course, you've got the touch controls here whereby you touch the button to bring the car alive, to bring the electronics alive. And this actually switches on all the, all the, all the feedback lights on the steering wheel, which is, which is all pretty cool, but I'm, I'm not so sure I'm a great fan of that. I'd rather have actual physical buttons. And you've got the full screen display here as well and see the aircon is kicking in. So let's just try and switch that off. Nice little touch control there. So you've got little touch controls here for the aircon system. 
I don't think it's actually going to switch off. Oh, yeah, they, there you go. I've actually managed to switch it off now or switch it down. Um, the center console is very compact in itself as well. If you, if you look at the center console, um, it's, it's very, very compact in its configuration. So you've got the window lift buttons here. You've got the different configuration settings for the drivability of the car, for the different driving options. Here you've got the aircon system as we've already talked about. The vents are a totally different design now than what you've got on the modern cars. And it actually feels a lot, you know, these feel a lot better engineered, almost floaty in their, in their operability. And then of course you've got this, which I believe is an option. You've got the passenger screen display, which gives you feedback and different options that you can set. So you can set your music, as we can see here, and various different other options as well. So you've got your sat nav, so it enables the passenger to configure the sat nav system, which I think is a very good idea. Um, it shouldn't be the driver that's configuring this sat nav system. At the end of the day, it's dangerous for the driver integrating too much with the, with the car. You can hear that humming in the background. That's probably the hybrid system. Um, setting itself up, which is which is interesting, and having driven this car, it's very linear. The, the the electric system, the hybrid system, feeds in, and there's no latency at all. So whereas the turbos would give you a little bit of latency, and you still can't avoid it. There is some latency, or will be some latency in turbo-driven cars, but this hybrid system just fills in. There is no gaps. The power delivery is absolutely linear, absolutely ph phenomenal performing car. With regards to the, the roof, the roof seems very encapsulating, very enclosing. Obviously, this is a GTB, so this isn't the Spider version. Spider version is released later, but it is in production or is in build slots at the moment. Um, but there's still plenty of room. I'm six foot one in my height, so there's still plenty of room. And you see here, we've got more touch controls on the right hand side. This is touch controls for the mirroring system. So, yeah, so it's all pretty good. And you've got carbon fiber, plenty of carbon fiber around the door cards. And um, you've got buttons on the side here, so if you want to open the door, then you press a button on the side here to actually open the door. So I would say, yeah, the inside is really, really cool. These are cleated race seats. The race seats are very supportive. That was very noticeable when I was at Milbrook Proving Ground, when the racing driver, the Italian racing driver, took us round the Proving Ground, and then I subsequently had a drive. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So we're at the upper tier garden section of the Casco Manor House estate here now today. Um, and this is, gives us a perfect perspective of all the Ferraris that have joined us today for the Cotswold Group Ferrari Owners event for the afternoon teas. Great overview there. You can see all the different cars in all their different splendor in all their different color schemes. Incredible. And a perfect day for it. We've got 33 degrees today. Hope you've enjoyed us bringing you along to the Ferrari Owners Club Cotswolds Group afternoon tea. Just look at that view. Fantastic. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, great content to come. If you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing, guys. Very, very important to us on the channel to move the channel forward. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.